From WLWT, this is Issues. Hello everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller and welcome to Issues. There are thousands of unsolved homicides throughout this country. The pain of not knowing is agonizing for families. What can be done to help families understand the many emotions to find closure and the options available to them to work with law enforcement officials to seek justice? In Greater Cincinnati, one organization leading the way is called You Can Speak For Me. This group works with Crime Stoppers to speak out against violence and encourage citizens, if you see something, say something. Today, the story of one woman's persistence to find justice for her son and many other victims and the tears you don't see. Daniel Chess Dudley, he is my son. Like all my children, he is the love of my life. I carried him for nine months, fed him clothing, and made sure his life was filled with love and a sense of feeling safe. Growing up, he was having fun and always quick to give you a smile. I made sure he knew how to find his way through church. He loved playing sports like most young boys do. He was my son and was full of life. Cincinnati homicide investigators trying to figure out who was the trigger man that started shooting at people in a car right in the middle of the street. Our heart is grieved, and now it's our turn. It has come to our family. Daniel Dudley's mom is leaning hard on those closest to her after her son was gunned down in Hartwell about 4 a.m. this morning. How is it that you can have life and be happy and almost carefree one moment and then total chaos the next? Once a violent crime is committed, time and events and people going and coming almost seems like a blur. You're angry, then there's the dull and pain, and eventually you give into the blank emptiness and disbelief. Your intent is to be strong, accepting prayers from families and all God's blessings from friends that may surround you with becoming only a distraction, but something deep inside you awakens like a hibernating animal in the spring. It starts with one honey question. Someone stole my son's life and I wanna know who and why. As I got ready to put the last minute of my things in the car, I get this scream on my phone that um, Chess is dead, he's dead, he's dead. And in my heart, I kept saying, Lord, no, it's not possible. This can't be, I rebuke this. But in my heart of hearts, I felt like something, something wasn't right. And I get to the hospital and I could see everybody standing around just like as if they was waiting on me. They were looking for me. They were looking for my expressions, my emotion. And I said, where is my child? And they told me his body was evidence and I couldn't touch him, but I could look at him through a window. So as I looked through the window and they led up the blinds, his head was turning toward me, but he was covered like, he had like a white sheet or towel covering the top of his head and his body. So I just wanted to just say, you know, get up. This is not happening. You need to get up. And 
was so... I couldn't say anything. And I turned and I said, my children are in the hallway waiting. Can they please come in and see him? So as they came in, they were passing out where they had to take them out in wheelchairs. My other son just, he just ran through the hall screaming. It was, it was just horrible to just go through that and stand there and try to be strong for my family because I know they were dependent on me. It's been 10 years since her son Chaz was murdered in a senseless drive-by shooting while driving home from a nightclub that morning. She's like every other family that comes to her organization called You Can Speak For Me for help. They have this one message. Just because the media headlines have gone away, just because it seems the police are investigating other crimes, we the family still remember. We will use whatever legal tools available to find you and find justice. Anytime a person loses a child, you have no clue of what to do. It's no rehearsal on how to handle the press or people coming up to you or even how to handle a funeral when it's your child. Miss Hope, as she is known, and all the families she is helping share a similar experience. She has woven the message of Stop the Violence into a movement in Hamilton and Butler counties. With the support of Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine, her mission to help families has taken the form of passing out cold case flyers, bookmarkers, and her specially designed cold case playing cards that have been adopted into Ohio prisons and county lockup facilities. Her See Something, Say Something media outreach strategy has become an important tool for local law enforcement. I asked the homicide department, do you pass off flyers or any information that a family, because I, I'm not experienced, I had no clue. They sent me to Crime Stoppers, which now I've been a member for 10 years. I received a flyer with a sketch, a chalk sketch, and they told me to um, pass it out in my neighborhood. I was so hurt. I just lost my child. They want to grow up! They want to grow up! They want to grow up! Stop the shoot! Stop the shoot! Stop. Through her organization, You Can Speak For Me, Miss Hope attempts to help families affected by violence maneuver through the maze of media, funeral arrangements, and law enforcement. And what is most important, she assures families they are not alone. The grieving process and the search for justice is the same for all families in these circumstances. All you have to do is look into the eyes of another mother or father, and you'll see the pain in the faces of all of the grieving families. While struggling with her own loss, Miss Hope understands their sorrow can almost penetrate your soul. How do you begin to understand such a senseless loss? But the pain of losing her son is never far away. Remembering his birthday, holidays, and the anniversary of the shooting casts a huge shadow. It hovers, this feeling of loss that visits her like an unwanted gloomy day. So what I did was, I did a bookmarker of my son with my prayers on it. And I started passing it out. And then I started sending it to the prisons and the jails so people could actually see that I was praying for justice. And this bookmarker was a part of my son and myself of what I wanted people to see that happened to us. During the holidays, posters went up in Winton Hills as families who lost loved ones to violence put the faces of unsolved murders out there, looking to jar some consciences. Be accountable for what you know. Because that person that's sitting there telling you about all these crimes can't hold their guilt, so they pass it on to you. So you're just as responsible as that person because now you've just carried his crime along with you. One of the primary missions of You Can Speak For Me 
is to give families a new purpose and desire for justice instead of revenge, putting them in touch with other agencies to search for salvation instead of hate. Also, how to maintain connections with local law enforcement authorities to continue the search for those who know they are guilty. There are monthly meetings sponsored for families to come together and share their ways of coping. While trying to find closure, it's important that families learn that there are many others just like themselves trying to move beyond the disappointment. You Can Speak For Me is one of a few local organizations that have recognized the National Crime Victims Rights Week. Held in April, the summit for the past 10 years has become one of the most prestigious gatherings in Ohio. Headlined by judicial, law enforcement, and first responders from across the state, discussing and answering families' questions about how this process works. A lot of the families that I print for can't afford posters or flyers. So if, if I'm printing one, it was easier to print two or three and just put them on one sheet. I could print them personal reward cards for themselves and their families and then be able to add that picture onto a community reward court and be able to put it out in a community and say, hey, this is what's going on in your community. And these how many unsolved homicides are in your community. And then it started growing from there. Miss Hope has received many awards over the years for her work as a family advocate. Just two weeks ago, she received the Crime Stoppers Board Member of the Year Award from police agencies in Southern Ohio and Northern Kentucky. Crime Stoppers honors and thanks the 2017 Crime Stoppers Board Member, Hope Dudley. While humbled by those she holds in the highest regard for their service, her message was still the same. Thank you. It, it would be 10 years ago tomorrow that my son was murdered. A week after that, I sat on a Crime Stoppers telethon, and 10 years later, I'm still a Crime Stoppers board member. I'd like to leave you with see something, say something. You can speak for me. Thank you. My child is a part of me. And every time I come up here, it hurts because I have no justice. And until I get justice for my child, I won't have no rest. I need to know what happened to my child. And I think it hurts so much because I don't know what happened to him. And I need people to come forward and help me. There are good people doing good things in our Cincinnati community. In some cases, we may never know their names until tragedy strikes. For families affected by senseless crime, the pain never ends. It was just a week of just trying to make arrangements and trying to pick out a coffin and clothes and because my mind wasn't on anything, but I had to bury my child. It was just a nightmare that I just thought I was asleep and that I could wake up, and this would be a bad dream. But every time I went to sleep, I could see that he was, he was gone. He wasn't where he's supposed to be and I couldn't hear him. I called his phone just so I could hear his voice. It was just unbelievable. Something I would wish on nobody to go through. That was the most horrible thing that ever happened to me. It's good to know that Miss Hope's brand of hope is showing others in the community that families are still here, still vigilant for justice, long after the headlines have disappeared. Even as Hope Dudley continues her fight for justice, there are more tears you don't see. 
On April 25th of this year, shortly after midnight on Galbraith Road, Omar Mohammed was shot and killed. He was only 24 years old. His murder remains unsolved. He was Hope Dudley's great nephew. If you have any information on his case or any of the unsolved crimes on the books, call Crime Stoppers at 513-352-3040. You can remain anonymous. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller. Remembering a community friend and servant, Reverend Russo O'Neill II. He died October 9th after a long health battle. He was 63 years old. You know, hundreds of people came out for the funeral at Rockdale Baptist Church in Avondale where he served as the pastor there for nearly two decades. From the well-known to everyday citizens, they were all there. O'Neill was called a champion for the community. He will be hard to replace. He was doing what came natural, I think. But I think when um, he retired, he realized the impact that he had on everyone's life. Reverend Russo O'Neill II understood the priorities of life, faith, family, and community. Father of five children, 13 grandchildren. I remember him just being there for everything, just my softball games, he was my softball coach. He made us all play two instruments and play two sports growing up. And he just celebrated his 40th anniversary with his high school sweetheart, Monica, back in August. We're not a people that is hopeless, but we have hope that we'll definitely see him again. And we had such a great, full, and wonderful life together. One of his children, his son, Russo Andre O'Neill III, is following in his dad's footsteps. He is now the pastor of Rockdale Church in Avondale. What did he think of you as a pastor? <sighs> he always told me I was doing a great job. Even when I started preaching, he would, say, he would tell me that I was better than him on certain areas, and I never, I couldn't see it. You know, all I just wanted to be was ah, the best that I could be. I just wanted to give God glory and just serve God and serve him as my father and my pastor. And it was just, it was bigger than him just being my pastor, you know, it was, and just my father. I mean, it was what God called me to do was to serve. When I became senior pastor, he was extremely proud. He was extremely proud. He said, you're doing a great job. I would ask him questions all the time. He's like, nope, I'm retired. <laughs> you had, you got it. So he, for all of my life, he prepared me for this time. We met at church, Rockdale Baptist <laughs> Church. Um, my father became the pastor of Rockdale Baptist Church. And then after that, my husband became the pastor, and now the legacy goes on. Our son is the pastor. So I was 15, he was 16 when we met. <laughs> We're gonna miss him, but it's, it's gonna work out. We're, we just, I can't get through here, but I'm gonna miss him so much. His leadership in the community will be missed, his voice always strong for change. Justice for janitors was a campaign that started in 2005. Janitors were earning poverty wages with no benefits, especially with health care. And uh, it was a campaign to lift wages for the janitors and to make our community, you know, uh, a lot better and raising awareness to the fact that there's a lot of poor people in Cincinnati who work uh, and were paid you know, little to nothing, and they were struggling. Pastor O'Neill was, I, he was actually the first pastor or leader of faith who joined our, ca our campaign. And he was our Dr. Martin Luther King. And we needed him due to the fact that um, we needed that faith, that, that bond, that 
would bring people together in, in the same way that Dr. King did. And just like how Dr. King fought for the garbage workers in Memphis and gave up his life for, for, work, for workers, for all workers, um, Pastor O'Neill was, was just like him and we couldn't have done it without him. He was at our rallies, he was at the negotiation tables, at our meetings, and he would always pray before the meeting and afterwards just meet with the janitors and uh, would lift them up when we were down. There were times where things weren't looking like we were gonna win our campaign, but uh, he would always be there to reassure us that um, you know this mission is, is a mission from God, there's a purpose to all of this, there's gonna be a struggle, but in the end we will prevail and the janitors did and so uh it was a three-year fight uh there were hunger strikes civil disobedience janitors were arrested um uh made a lot of noise in downtown but at the end of the day uh you know the janitors prevailed family was very important like he he taught us how to play baseball he was our coach on our basketball team you know, he went to all our games, was at all our concerts, would make sure that we harmonized correctly, sat us in the car, and uh, he, was, he was the greatest dad. He was the greatest that he had time for every single one of us, even though he was so busy. And, uh, and I love him for that. And now that we're fathers, and we've all grown up, and he has 13 grandchildren, and uh, we're all parents now. Now, my brothers, we talk about uh, the sacrifices that he made. And it's real. Like, we see the sacrifices that you have to make to be able to be that type of father and provide for your family and then still take care of everybody else. You know, you know we see the sacrifice. And it was, it was difficult, but now we're learning how to do it ourselves. A memorial fund has been set up in Reverend O'Neill's name to help pay for all the medical bills. Donations are accepted at any Fifth Third Bank. I'll be back in a moment. The Greater Cincinnati community also lost another well-known community leader and friend, longtime radio host at WCIN Radio, and a leader, Everett Cork, died this past weekend. Cork was a proud native of Lincoln Heights and a United States Navy veteran. He was awarded the Martin Luther King Keep the Dream Alive Award this year. This is video of him at the uh, library talking about WCIN. Back in a moment. Well, that does it for the program today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Curtis Fuller. Have a nice day.